Good evening, Hope City family. I pray that this video finds you guys well on this uh, first few days of 2021. I wanted to take a couple of minutes to update you guys on some things related to COVID-19 and how we're responding to that as a church. As you guys know, we've been meeting in person for the past, I would say about seven months or so, going back to June of 2020, and God has met us in incredible ways. And so we're thankful for that. We're thankful for the the opportunity to do so. And even for those of you that have been uh, Hope City Online members or those of you who've been tuning in each week through Facebook and YouTube, um, God has been so faithful. And so we're thankful. Um, as you know, across this country, even here in our home state of Ohio, even here actually in the county that we live in, Franklin County, over the past month or so, there have been an increase in uh, positive test results as well as hospitalization and deaths, unfortunately. And so we wanna be mindful of that. Our posture from day one has always been to be re reflexive and to be re quick to react uh, with wisdom. And so our church is blessed to have wise godly counsel among our elders and other members who work as medical professionals. Many of you work even as nurses or doctors and uh, different ways that you serve our community. So we've sought your counsel and we've sought your guidance. Uh, Past couple of weeks, uh, we've noticed there have been a handful, not a, thankfully not a ton of people. But we've had you know a handful of people in our congregation, about five or six that I'm aware of, who tested positive for COVID. And in a congregation of you know six, seven hundred people, um, that's about one percent. So it's not a great number of people, but again, it's nothing we want to take lightly. And because we're very social people, we know that people like to hang out outside of church, of course. And so the first, I guess, goal of this video is to encourage all of you to practice uh, best practices with regard to wearing masks and trying your best to socially distance um, and avoid, you know, intimate gatherings, especially where, you know, you've got, you know, seven to eight people together for extended periods of time. Now, obviously, we're all adults. We can do what we want, but we do want to do as much as we can to minimize uh, those types of situations, especially outside of church. Um, because again, you know, with Sunday morning being the day that we usually gather, of course, uh, I guess common sense or logic would say well, we should cancel service. But the truth is we hang out, many of us, outside of church. And so at this point uh, in the pandemic, there's not a lot that we can do to mitigate the natural spread of the virus. These things kind of have a life of their own. And so the best we can do is use wisdom. So I want to let you know that we're going to continue to meet as we have, but we are going to be much more intentional with some of the policies that we've put in motion over the past few months, such as temperature checks at the door and uh, doing our best to make sure our masks are on at all times. Now, I realize that um, we've all grown accustomed to life with masks and life with COVID, uh, but when we come into the church, we have to uphold those standards as well, or we could be in a situation which is detrimental, and we don't want that. Of course, we have faith and we pray, uh, but contrary to certain things you may see online, this virus is not a hoax. I've personally um, experienced the loss of loved ones due to COVID 19, as well as many of you across this country. Many people have, uh, whether it was the exact cause of their death or just a contributing factor. In no, no way, shape, or form do we want to minimize the very real um, reality of what's going on around this world and in our country. So we want to use wisdom. Um, but again, the second, second thing, this is more technical and practical for you, is I talked to Dr. Wayne Gordon, who's one of our elders, who, as you know, uh, has been a practicing medical doctor for 30 plus years. And there are two types of COVID tests. Now, one is a rapid results test which you can get back, I believe, in maybe 24 to 48 hours. And based on what we're seeing nationwide, those quick result tests are not that accurate. There's quite a few false positives. I don't know if false negatives are a thing, but there's also another test. And that test takes maybe a few days. I wish I knew the technical terms off the top of my head. It's PCR or something like that. I may have my letters mixed up. Uh, but if you have the option of getting the test that is more reliable, please take that option. I realize that, you know, urgent care facilities, hospitals where these rapid tests are available, 
obviously are more convenient for people. But what we don't want to have happen is some sort of unnecessary pandemonium um, as a result of this pandemic. And what I mean by that is if you uh, tested positive, you have no reason to fear. We trust that God is able to heal, but we also want to be wise. And so um, we're just encouraging people to take the more reliable test if they need it. Um, if you have no symptoms and if you are not symptomatic, I guess is the way they say it, then you have no reason to be afraid if you were in the same room as the person that may have tested positive. One of the things we've noticed is that there's a lot of, I shouldn't say a lot, but there's a growing sense of pandemonium and we just want everyone to be at peace. Um, granted, we're not going to take anything for granted, but we want to make sure that we're not overreacting as well. So let's use wisdom. Let's just use common sense, really. Um, do our best to wear a mask at all times, keep our hands washed and avoid personal touch. You know, even tomorrow when we gather at church, you know, don't hug, don't do things that could facilitate the spread of the virus. Uh, because again, that's not in any of our best interests. So I guess I want to give you guys an update. We're watching it very closely. Uh, Lord willing, we won't have to make any changes to our service schedule after a year or so of being at half speed. It is, it's been quite frustrating. I know for many of you as well who want to be back with us. The good news is if these uh, vaccines work and they prove to be successful, uh, we should have a turnaround with this pandemic rather soon. So that is our prayer. For those of you that are not uh, vaccine people, uh, cho choose to pray as well. You know, whether you agree with it or not for ethical reasons or personal reasons, let's just pray that this COVID-19 goes away and that we can have a year uh, without the pain and suffering that it has brought. So I just want to give you guys an update, let you know where we're at. Um, again, no need to overreact if you were around someone that tested positive unless you have symptoms, of course. And if you do have symptoms still, no need to overreact. 99.9% .9 chance you will be fine. Uh, but we want to be wise and we'll be sensitive to that. So let's love each other by keeping our mask on, refraining from physical touch when we do gather. And again, if you have symptoms uh, such as sore throat, headache, high fever, uh, body aches, the list of those symptoms are online, loss of smell and whatnot, then uh, stay home and join us online. Um, and for those of you joining us online, join us online and watch the service from start to finish if you can. Uh, we know our services are a bit long, but uh, you know, a little bit of helpful information here. We are streaming on YouTube. So you can just pull up Hope City on YouTube and the experience is much better for those of you with smart TVs to watch on a TV. If you want to interact in the chat, you can even do that on YouTube as well. Just a different audience than the Facebook audience. Also, video quality and audio quality is much better on YouTube. So my preference would be watch on YouTube, but whether it's YouTube or Facebook or from our website, let's stay connected. Let's stay engaged. We're getting off to a great start in 2021. Our New Year's Eve service was really powerful. Lots of prophetic words were released and prayers were made that night that I believe really um, set the tone for this year. And so, again, just want to encourage you guys to um, be wise, but don't overreact. And let's get ready to have a blessed year. God is with us. And we're going to see, as David said in Psalm 27, 13, the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's our declaration over America and over our city. that This is the land of the living. So uh, God bless you all. I'm going to be excited to see many of you for our first Sunday of the year tomorrow. And uh, for those of you who are watching online, uh, look forward to reading your comments maybe after service and just uh, getting on the same page. So pray for me uh, and I'll be praying for you and know that God is in control and all is well. God bless you and Happy New Year.